and that's the window where your plants will be most enhanced by the moon and the planetary cycles. At every farm, they should have a plan. That way, when you're planning out your seed totals and where all those seeds gonna, are going to go and what beds they're going to go in, you stick to that plan. No questions asked. Stick to the plan. And if you have to go off the plan slightly, that's okay. You make note of it, and then you change it around next year. So in this biodynamic Alamac here, it breaks down like a 14 to 17 day time period and that's like your transplant window and that's the window where your plants will be most enhanced by the moon and the planetary cycles so within that window you'll get specific days you you grow specific crops so you have like a leaf day you'll have a fruit day, you'll have a flower day, and you'll have a root day. So, for example, like your leaf day, you plant, you know, your kale, your lettuces, your arugula, any of your specialty greens, and then maybe a fruit day would be like your tomatoes, your summer squash, your cucumbers, stuff like that. So in the book, it actually breaks all this down. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see my screen here. What we're looking at is our final garden layout. Okay, so let's get into it. You can see I've got three plots here. And the reason I divide them up and put them in plots is they're easier to manage, right? So when I'm telling Ashley or someone that's helping us here on the farm, hey, go to, go to the celery bed. Well, she might ask, well, where is it? Well, it's in plot one bed A, you know, so you can divide it up that way where you have your plots and then your beds. Um, we've got them divided into three plots here. There's 24 beds total. So let's talk about the first plot. So the first plot here is our high rotation plot. So these are all the crops that we're rotating over and over and over again. They're quick harvesting. And so in those beds, with one exception. The exception is, of course, celery. So we've got one bed of celery, and we've got spinach, turnip, baby kale, leaf lettuce, head lettuce, arugula, radish. Special greens are like mache and wintercress and purslane and sorrel, stuff like that. And then you've got your herb bed, which is like your 10th bed. And in that bed, we've got lemon balm. And then we've got all of Anthony's aromatic herbs, which are oregano, rosemary, thyme, and uh, sage. So that's plot one. And uh, these, these crops might even get cut once and then grow back again. You know, like uh, uh, lettuce, for example, 45-day crop, but you can get multiple cuttings off it. So you can cut it once, let it grow back, and you can do that up to four times. So there's a lot of crops in here that, that you can do this with. The crops grown in plot two are, are crops that aren't high rotation. So these are the crops that we might plant once in that bed and just keep harvesting throughout the season. Crops like uh, kale, large kale, uh, broccoli, cherry tomatoes, summer squash. Uh, we've got cabbage, parsley, dill in there, some cucumbers, and lots of tomatoes. And if you watched our last video that we did on what we're growing this season, we talk about how we're going to grow lots of cherry tomatoes because cherry tomatoes we're going to try to sell on the roadside. So let's talk about the color coding on this farm layout here. So we can see celery, for example, and then you go to the celery bed and you'll see there's a light celery, a medium celery, and a dark celery. Well, what that is telling us is the different successions. So rather than planting that whole bed, I plant them in successions. And my successions when I plant stuff, it's all done based upon the biodynamic K 
calendar here. So there's a transplant window in here, and that's when I transplant my successions of that crop. And the reason we're succession planting is because we don't want just one big harvest. We want uh, to continue to harvest all season long so there's no gaps in what we're growing. The minute you have gaps, you have inconsistencies, and we don't want any inconsistencies. We want a steady flow of crops coming all season long. I'll use lettuce for example. We don't want lettuce in 45 days and then having to wait another 45 days before the next harvest of that lettuce. We want to plant uh, lettuce and then wait another 15 days, plant another round of lettuce, and then wait 15 and plant another round of lettuce. So you're always having a steady supply of lettuce. Now what we also tried to do with this biodynamic calendar is we tried to line up our beds to the specific days. So our leaf days we're working on all the leaf beds which are near each other. On the fruit days we're working on all the fruit beds which are near each other. On the root days you're working on all the root, root crops that are in those beds near each other. So we try to line it up that way so we're not running all over the different beds on specific days. It makes it a lot easier to manage. Now if you're not planting using these biodynamic techniques, then maybe you just set up your beds based on your harvest date. And then leave maybe like a 14 day window. And then that way when you're working these beds, the, you're working the same beds in the same area based on the harvest date. And I'm going to jump to my Excel spreadsheet next and I'm going to show you here how I've taken this layout and actually made an Excel spreadsheet of it. So let's jump into that. 